Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. This current video is an introduction to cold weather testing, how we test our products or systems to cold weather conditions. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, let's get started! In this video, we will cover definitions, types of tests, and an overview of cold weather testing. So what is cold weather testing? Cold weather testing is used to verify and validate that a product or system can survive and perform in a low temperature or sub-freezing environment. Cold weather testing can be used to ensure safety, reliability, and durability of various systems and products for harsh cold weather conditions. Let's go ahead and cover some of the types of cold weather tests. Some of the types of cold weather testing include cold temperature soak, which can be either a long-term test or an accelerated test at low temperatures, Ice bath or ice water immersion test, which is where you literally immerse your system or product into ice water. Cold weather battery testing, cold weather engine testing, and low view or low friction vehicle testing. Let's go ahead and cover each of these tests, starting with cold temperature soak testing. Cold temperature soak testing is typically performed in a thermal test chamber as pictured. The temperature range can be as low as negative 100 degrees Celsius and up to zero degrees Celsius. The cooling of the test chamber can either be done mechanically using a refrigeration system or using liquid nitrogen cooling. Testing durations can last days, months, or even years depending on your system's requirements and whether or not you are using acceleration factors for your test. Types of testing that can be performed include non-operational, which literally means that the device or system is not powered on, or that the device switch has not been switched to the on position or the power on position. Or the test can be on an operational test, which means that the power is applied to a system or product and it is operated as it would in the field or in customer's hands. Non-operational testing examples include packaging testing, where packages are transported through harsh cold weather conditions, or storage testing, where packaging or systems or vehicles are stored in cold weather conditions. Examples of operational testing include testing under cold weather conditions with electronic devices powered on and running through various functions as it would in the end user's hands. It can also be used to test motors or engines at various speeds and RPM under cold weather conditions, or batteries charging and discharging under cold weather low temperature conditions. Testing can be accelerated, as mentioned before, to speed up test results. For low temperature testing, if you are unsure what your requirements are when running initial tests, use a test standard specific to your industry as a baseline for developing your initial tests. Let's go ahead and cover ice water or ice bath immersion testing now. Ice water immersion can be either a partial or full immersion of your system or product. Ice water immersion testing can be used to simulate real world environmental conditions or can be used as a rapid thermal shock test as water is a better heat transfer medium than air. Immersion depth heights for testing can range from a few millimeters to one meter or more. Just be careful not to fall in and give yourself an ice bath. Unless you're part of the Polar Bear Club, then this is right up your alley. Go ahead and fall right in. Let's go ahead and cover cold weather battery testing now. Cold weather battery tests include cold crank tests, where a battery is used to start an engine in cold weather conditions, charging tests, such as charging your electric vehicle in the dead of winter, and discharge tests that simulate things such as smartphones capturing that sweet half pipe trick you did on a snowboard, or used to power a motor on an electric vehicle when doing spirited driving in sub-freezing weather conditions. I want to take a minute to provide a word of caution if the batteries you are testing are composed of lithium ion. Do not charge lithium ion cells or batteries below zero degrees C. If you do, you must have some form of active heating applied to your battery system to ensure the cell temperatures remain above a safe temperature to charge. Also, refer to the cell manufacturer's data sheet for the specific lithium ion cells that you are using for your application. So why should you be concerned with testing lithium ion batteries in cold weather conditions? Let's go ahead and cover this briefly. Just like any other battery, a lithium ion battery has an anode and a cathode. You can think of the anode as a sponge that sucks up the lithium as the battery is charged. The anode is a porous structure that under normal conditions allows the lithium to flow into the anode. 
but under cold weather conditions, the pore structure shrinks and does not allow lithium to flow inside of the anode. What ends up happening is the anode begins to cover, coat, or plate the surface of the anode. This is called lithium plating. As you foolishly charge a lithium ion battery under cold weather conditions, it will begin to coat the anode with lithium and it will start to build up lithium platin onto the anode, which increases the resistance. The battery cells and battery system will begin to get hotter and hotter and can go into thermal runaway. And ta-da, you have yourself a nice hot lithium ion fire. Pretty cool, not really. Let's go ahead and cover engine cold weather testing now. Engine cold weather testing is used to assess engine performance at low temperatures. It is also used to evaluate different compositions and viscosities of engine oils and cold weather life testing. Cold weather makes engine oil thicker and more viscous and less fluid. This means that engine oil pumps will have a more difficult time pulling up oil lubricant into the pistons and cylinders, which leads to an increase in heat and friction and reduces engine life. This is why folks in colder weather climates use a lower weight oil when winter comes to ensure that their engines stay lubricated. Let's go ahead and cover low mu or low friction vehicle testing now. Some of the features of a vehicle that are assessed under low friction or low mu environments include handling performance, braking performance, functional safety, low to high mu testing, which is performed under full throttle or launch mode use cases with vehicles. The change in sudden friction of surfaces causes the tires to grip to a driving surface with a higher friction, which can really send a jolt through your drivetrain and can identify weaknesses in your drivetrain system's components. Low mu testing is also used to assess noise, vibration, and harshness of a vehicle, and is also used for development, verification, and validation of torque vectoring capabilities on vehicles as well. Let's go ahead and go into more detail on torque vectoring. Torque vectoring can give drivers the edge in spirited driving and tighter, faster cornering on tracks and mountainous roads. However, it can be very useful in applications for driving through snow and ice. Torque vectoring is a combination of mechanical and electronic controls for your powertrain that controls the torque going to each wheel. It helps prevent understeer and keeps the vehicle pointed in the desired direction that the driver intends for the vehicle to move in. In other words, it corrects the vector or trajectory of the vehicle to ensure the vehicle goes in the direction that the driver wants or intends the vehicle to go and correct a vehicle that is slipping on snow or ice. And that's it folks! Some key takeaways from this video are look out for Jack Frost. Working in cold weather conditions can have safety implications such as frostbite or hypothermia. So be sure to dress appropriate and wear PPE such as insulative gloves to keep yourself warm and safe. Understand the risks and requirements for your system. Make sure you have a well-defined list of system requirements, understand the risks, and have it performed a functional safety assessment when developing your cold weather testing and your system or product. And as mentioned in the Jack Frost pointer, be safe. Don't be an idiot and do something that can kill yourself or somebody else. Don't charge lithium ion batteries without thermal protection or active heating. And don't drive like an idiot when testing a vehicle's features and functionality in cold weather conditions. Know how your system can fail and know your own limitations, especially if the testing involves operating a vehicle. So stay safe and don't die so you can continue to watch my awesome videos. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or need help with your cold weather testing development or performing your cold weather testing, feel free to reach out to me at one of the descriptions below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year! I will see you again in 2020!